Aviana Blue, you know what that means. <laughs> friends welcome back it's episode five and we are in Dulles Virginia um, or actually we're in Manassas Virginia flew to Dulles I uh, just got checked into my hotel I'm going to get something to eat and then meet the owner of a Piper Meridian at the airport hoping to get started if not finish the leather and interior cleaning on this plane and then tomorrow we're gonna do a paint correction and ceramic coating on that one um, then we're gonna move to Frederick Maryland where AOPA is headquartered and we're gonna do some plans with them so very very excited to be here um, it's gonna be a big weekend and I'm excited to share it with you as well so. hey what's up we are plane side this is the Piper Meridian that we're working on this plane has a lot of potential because it's in really bad shape so our process is going to show a big differential uh, it's going to be a lot of work there's a lot of paint oxidation on here there's some staining uh, it, it appears this plane has sat outside for a bit uh, with the previous owner so there's a lot of UV damage also being a pressurized turboprop it can fly really high so it, it's gonna be exposed to more UV as it's flying higher anyway, but um, it, it, it's gonna make a big turnaround. I, I'm excited about that. It's gonna be a lot of work, um, but I, it's definitely gonna make the owner very happy. Let, let's, take a, let's take a look around this plane and I'll show you some of the trouble spots. So exhaust comes out here and you see that staining. Up here we have these are called vortex generators, which is a fancy way of saying polishing pad shredders. So we have to polish in between those. See, there's a lot of them actually. Um, the blues, it, it's like a metallic blue, but it's really dull. Like it's, it just doesn't have any luster to it. We're gonna do some touch up here. You can see these lenses are oxidized. Let's go, keep going. Underneath the tail, we have more vortex generators. So now you get to work overhead in between these little bastards. That's actually pretty clean. A lot of times you see a lot of exhaust accumulation underneath there. So that's not bad. Now all the exhaust kind of, the way it spins around hits the underside of the service. So you see how much dirtier this side is? Then the other side I just showed you. This is gonna be pretty hard to clean. Um, it, we won't get this perfect, but we'll get it looking a lot better. So we're also gonna do the interior. We're gonna clean the leather and coat it. Um, I was gonna do that first, but it's like 100 degrees in there, so I, I got this little fan going. Uh, DC turns out is in fact the swamp, so it's like 90 degrees and really, really humid. Hopefully it's going to cool down a little bit, so I'm going to leave that hangar door open, get some colder humid air in, and try and pump that in the cabin. Um, but until then, I'm just going to run that fan and then try and take as many of the cushions outside and work on them outside. First step here is going to be wash. We're going to do a no-rinse wash, so we're going to mix up about half an ounce of no-rinse in, in like an 18-ounce sprayer bottle. Don't quote me on those exact formulations. Uh, so we're going to spray it on, wipe it off, get, get most of the stuff off. We're going to use a citrus cleaner at a 1 to 10 dilution 
to get the um, kind of heavier exhaust staining off. And then I don't think I'm gonna bother with the underside for now. I, I just wanna get the top side washed, get a few test areas done tonight so I know what to expect. And then uh, depending on how the cabin is, I might go work on the inside or I might start polishing. So this is just no rinse. And we got a lot of bugs here. This plate hasn't been coated yet. But we're just gonna take a microfiber towel, wipe it. Most of it came off. Let's say you had some spots that didn't come off, just spray it again and uh, let them soak. Water really is just the best solvent for getting this kind of stuff off. I sprayed a little bit for my procedure. Let me show you this modification. So we're gonna spray no rinse on there first. That way it's evenly wet. We're gonna add our citrus one to 10 dilution. That's getting most of it off. Um, but let's say it was really, really stained. While it's wet, we're gonna put on a spritz of 100% citrus cleaner. And we follow up again with no rinse. And that helps get the soap off. And then if you, if you were just washing your plane, take a dry towel, dry it off, you're done. Pretty awesome. So I did a quick little test area to see what process is gonna work best on this paint. On one side of the tape line, I did standard yellow pad, hyper polish, rotary, left, right, up, down, left, right, up, down. On the other side, I went super aggressive. I went hyper compound, which is really harsh, and a wool pad, which is gonna make it even more aggressive. Put them side by side, not really a difference. Check this out. So here's the tape line. This are before. Here's one side. Here's the other side. Again, here's the before. Can you tell which side is heavy compound and which side is light polish? If you looked really closely, you'd be able to tell that there's holograms on this side which are artifacts of the aggressive paint correction. This side doesn't have them. But this side still removed the oxidation and made this paint, uh, this paint system shine again. Isn't that amazing? So, wool pad, heavy compound, light pad, polish. Would you be happy if your plane looked like this? Looks clean, right? Look at that difference. I washed this. This is washed. That color change is just the subtle degradation of your top layer of paint. It oxidizes, it becomes chalky and yellow. And when we do a paint correction, we remove all of that and you get clean reflections again. And the surface is a lot smoother too, so it cleans up easier. Then we put a ceramic coating on it and it is a lot more uh, impervious to that exhaust. See, here's the problem. PT6 exhaust from this turbo prop runs all over the side and just sticks to the fuselage and it eats away that paint and it just turns yellow and oxidized and rough. We're gonna do a paint correction test, like a paint correction competition. On the top of the wing there, um, where all that exhaust was sitting, that's the most oxidized part of this plane. I'm gonna do light polish, heavy compound. See if there's a difference between the two. Okay, first we're gonna, we're gonna do uh, light polish.
spray some no rinse on there, get the polish off. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, wool pad hyper compound, which is very aggressive. We're gonna polish right in there. So where we already polished to see if we can show an improvement. Interesting, very interesting. So here's before paint correction. Here's the light paint correction. So before light correction, heavy correction, look at that. So you see the difference here? So we're looking at this overhead light here, right? So this part just got a normal paint correction. This part got a heavy paint correction. On the side of the plane, it didn't make a difference. The wing having so much more oxidation, it actually does benefit us to do a heavier paint correction. See that difference? front third half of this wing is now polished so it's a lot wider a lot brighter a lot smoother too um, but got a little problem I'll show you here so these little vortex generators these guys um, change the way air flows over the wing so as the air hits it it starts spinning creates a vortex or a like a horizontal tornado and that helps the air stick to the wing longer. See, there's a lot of them. Because the polishing pad is a circle, you can see all these little half circles where it's wider on this side and it's darker here because I haven't been able to polish in there yet. So, now I'm going to polish in between them. It's fun, but it's, um, you know, it's challenging, so it's fun. It just takes a little bit longer. I think I'm gonna polish the back half of the, well, I'm gonna polish a little bit of the wing, but then I'm gonna go back and, no, you know what? It's midnight, I'm gonna clean up. We're gonna start early tomorrow. Good morning, uh, it's day one. Technically, yesterday was day one, but that's a travel day, so call that day zero. Let's take a look at what got accomplished here. Uh, I did a test area on the fuselage here. So this line up here in front of it um, did a paint correction. You can see my reflection on this side. Here you don't see anything. So that's, that's what a paint correction will do for you. We're not even shining bright lights at it. That's just passive reflection. Um, on the wing, in front of this line got polished, behind it just got cleaned and you can see how much whiter that is. Then we also um, did all these vortex generators and polished this lens, which was very yellow. So that's looking a lot better. We're gonna continue work and uh, I'll keep you updated. While well, we have daylight and it's not super hot yet, we're gonna work on the interior. To get to the flight deck, you really have to squeeze through. So we see a lot of wear on uh, this area up here, then as well up here. So 
give that a good cleaning and then I'm gonna clean buttons and switches and that kind of stuff. Remember that picture we posted a while ago? I'm gonna do the exact same thing up there. So we're just gonna clean and disinfect switches here and Much better. You don't want to accidentally pull this one up while it's uh, on the ground. Even though the master's off, you never know. Alright, so I like to half ass things so you can see the before and after half. Let's take a look. So I got before, after, before, after. A little bit bigger difference. Before, after. Much bigger difference there. Um, just different parts get dirty differently. You can see on the side here, it's still dirty. A lot cleaner. So these creases in the leather that just kind of naturally occur, they get loaded up with dirt and it looks like the leather is cracking, but it's really just dirty. So we can make this look a lot better. All right, it's tight and hot, so perfect time for a tutorial video. We're gonna clean leather. I use mostly two chemicals. One is no rinse at about a one to 20 dilution. So that's optimum no rinse, the blue stuff. And then G-Technic I2 Tri-Clean. That's kind of the stronger cleaner. Um, in addition, brushes like these kind of leather cleaning brushes or normal nail brush in a microfiber towel. So let's take a look at the leather first and see what we got. So this one I haven't done yet. This one is completed. Same plane, same seats, right? So let's take a look. Is your leather dirty or is it cracked? So this is dirty. This is gonna come out this, this is abrasion wear, and this is actually going to look worse as we get it wet. It's going to turn dark. So that, that, that'll be normal, but we're not going to be able to fix that. We're going to be able to fix this. Um, we're going to work in kind of small panels or, or sections at a time. The first thing we're going to do, um, assuming you already vacuumed it, make sure there's no loose dirt on there, is spray it down with some no rinse. And I just want it to be pretty evenly wet. The other thing you need to keep in mind is that some leathers turn darker or lighter when they get wet. And that's normal, that'll go away once it dries. Uh, so that's why we want it pretty evenly wet. And this is just a no rinse. It's gonna start emulsifying some of the oils that are on there, but more than anything, it's gonna be a carrier for the tri-clean, right? So we're gonna take the tri-clean, spray it on our pad or brush, whatever you end up using, and we're gonna kinda spread it on there, and we're just gonna scrub. I'm not putting a lot of pressure down. You really don't need to. But the key is to change direction often because that's how um, how those little fibers on this pad get in the pores on the leather. So you see the grime is starting to come out. My, uh, my floodlight actually just died, so hopefully you can still see that. Now you wanna make sure to wipe this up pretty quick so it doesn't go back in. So there you go. Got the center part of it done. Let's spray it with no rinse again. Get the rest of the soap and grime out. That's all there is to it. So that's nice and clean now. Um, this edge is still pretty dirty. Because of these creases, they're just natural creases in the leather, um, we're probably gonna have to use a more aggressive brush. So we're gonna spray it down again with no rinse, kinda get it evenly wet. 
Um, we'll, we'll try it with this brush. So these are basically really short fibers. So we'll spray a little bit on there. Start massaging that in. We'll see if that gets it out of the deeper creases. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. So make sure it's a frequently changed direction again to kind of scrub in from all possible angles. You see that actually did a pretty good job. See all the kind of grime coming out and uh, moving around. That, that's why you make sure to wipe this up before it dries. Otherwise, you're just, just you're shifting the dirt around and putting it somewhere else. See, many people think of leather cleaning as an additive process where you have to add oils and conditioner and all that stuff but the fact is I mean the the leather's dead it, it doesn't have pores that open up and need nutrients right like it, it's dead and also this is coated leather so so underneath is your cow skin but then there's pigment and then there's a polyurethane layer on top so if you were to put oily conditioner on there it's never gonna soak in because those pores in the leather are too small. Um, it's just gonna sit on top, it's gonna attract dirt, and it's gonna, um, actually it can degrade the polyurethane finish. Some of the oils can, so. Make sure you, you know what you're cleaning. If you have some really old school leather, like a King Ranch truck that, you know, if you get it wet, it turns dark. Um, you know, that's different, but most automotive and aerospace leathers are polyurethane coated. Uh, assuming it's even leather, in many cases it's actually vinyl. So after we finish cleaning, um, we're, we're going to ceramic coat the, the seats. And basically that's going to build up that polyurethane layer with a more stain and abrasion resistant layer. So next time, um, you just take some no rinse, spray it on, wipe it off, and, and that'll help keep the seats a lot cleaner. But you can see what a difference that made here. Um, I'm gonna keep doing the rest of the plane and uh, get it coated. Finish the interior cleaning. It's not coated yet. We'll do that later. It's starting to get really hot in there. Um, I gotta go pick up Ken, so gotta go back to Dulles and uh, try and find him and the mass of people. Once I get him back, we'll probably uh, switch gears to paint correction, so we'll leave the interior alone. And uh, hopefully finish all paint correction today, and then we'll start coating tomorrow. Fingers crossed. All right, so we got back from the airport around 2.30 and 6 o'clock now. I got Ken and he quickly went to work polishing the wings, the underside of the wings specifically. Look at that shine, it's like a mirror. No one's ever gonna see that, unfortunately. Um, I've been working on the fuselage and the back end of the fuselage is done with paint correction. See the difference it makes, so. Look at the reflection here. You see the light wand is nice and clean. On this side, you see how yellow and dull it is? That's all paint oxidation. That's the improvement we're making. So we're gonna mix three parts paint with one part activator. Our unit of measurement is a drop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 28, 29, 30. Then we're gonna put 10 drops of activator in. B, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, we're gonna sand this spot, or rough it up with this abrasive tip that came with the touch up pen. We're gonna add our first layer of blue. That is a surprisingly good match. Let's get a smaller brush. I'm just gonna put paint in and let it flow into the edges.
the upside of it being so hot is that it's gonna dry fast. I did this in Michigan and I had to take a halogen light, use it as a drying lamp. Really just managing how that glob of paint flows down. Hey, so it's 10.30. Uh, we just came back from having a bite to eat. Ken is finishing up the underside. Um, all he has left is the flaps. He's working on those. Flaps and underside of ailerons actually on both sides. I'm finishing up the underside of the horizontal stabilizer back there. And then that should give us enough time. Um, I put some touch-up paint on the front. Once that's dry, I'm gonna start polishing the cowling. Once we get that done, there's nothing left to do but handle wipe and coat, so that's exciting. Um, that is kind of a active job, so we may just do the underside, which is the hardest part, get that done, and then we'll do the top, the easy part, tomorrow. So we should be done with this plane about midday tomorrow. At least that's the goal. We'll see how that goes. All right, so it's 1 a.m. This is the part of the night where we reconcile that what we were planning like five hours ago didn't happen. That said, got a lot done. The underside is coating ready, so it's wiped, polished, ready to go. Everything else is polished, um, just needs to be wiped and coated. Because coating takes more attention and physical prowess than what we have right now, we're going to call it good. but. Happy with the progress. We're gonna wrap this up probably before. I'm not gonna make predictions. I'm not gonna make predictions. So, just gonna turn the lights off, close the door, and get out of here. See you tomorrow. Good morning. It is day two. It's like 9.23. Got in here about an hour ago with Ken, and uh, we got the underside of the plane coated. Now, usually I procrastinate that till the end. But since we had limited time with the creeper and it was still cool, um, we got the whole bottom coated. So we're done with that. We're gonna panel wipe the rest of the plane. So we're gonna do the fuselage first and the vertical stabilizer. Get that uh, panel wiped and coated. Then when we're done getting on top of the wing, we can panel wipe and coat the wings because you do need to stand right there to work right there. So we're gonna get to panel wiping and uh, should be wrapping this plane up shortly. We're done. It is. 126, we are done earlier, we've just been cleaning up. The plane looks pretty good, the owner just came by, we showed him how to take care of it, because that is important as well. Let's uh, take a look and see what we got. Look at that wing. Better yet, look how glossy the wing is down here. Like, who does that? Who makes wings that shiny on the bottom? It's all that man right there. Hello! So now we're all packed up. Our next stop is Frederick, Maryland. Um, we're gonna meet with Tom Haynes of AOPA and work on his planes. However, he is not available till the afternoon, and since we finished early, we are going to go to the Air and Space Museum. What do you need, Ken? I need food. I need food. Substance in my belly. Get in my belly. Ken doesn't think sous vide egg bites are food. That's a snack. That is a snack. That's not food. <laughs> Ken is not fat adapted, so Ken gets hungry a lot. So we're gonna have to go find some food for Ken so he can be hungry again in two hours. We 
we are at the museum. Not allowed to professionally film, nope. but good thing I'm not a professional filmmaker. Me so. You gonna polish that, Ken? I bet you I can make that thing shine. Probably not. No, I don't. It's too big. Greatest achievement of mankind, <laughs> just hanging out back there. So here's an interesting story about the space shuttle. The first one that went up, Columbia, this part, this is a control surface. This controls uh, the angle upon re-entry. The solid rocket boosters had such a big shock wave just bouncing back that this got bent on launch. This part got bent. And when they were re-entering, it, it required more than anticipated control surface deflection to get the shuttle in the right attitude. Um, the commander of the spa first space shuttle, he said that had he known that that part was damaged, they would have just flown up to a safe altitude and ejected. That, that's how close the first space shuttle was to failing. We're taking a little break. We found arguably the best bench in the world. What was your favorite thing? The spaceship, honestly. The space shuttle? Yeah. yeah. Definitely space shuttle. I've never seen a space shuttle before. Me neither. Um, so we're gonna head up to Frederick, which is in Maryland, probably about a half hour north of here. Um, maybe find a coffee place along the way, take a little break. Then we're gonna meet with Tom Haynes, editor-in-chief of AOPA, and uh, figure out which one of the planes we're gonna work on there, so. Till we see you next time. Till next time.